Physicists don't know what most of the matter in the universe is made of. They think it's some sort of dark matter that makes itself noticeable only through its gravitational pull. But that may just have been totally wrong. Today I want to talk about a new idea that explains our observations without introducing any new type of matter. It's rather that we might have misunderstood how gravity really works. It's a new type of modified gravity, one that could overcome the problems with early ideas and maybe even connect the observations to quantum gravity. Let's have a look. The laws of physics that we have discovered have one thing in common. They are local. This means that objects in two different locations can't interact with each other. They don't know anything about each other. A bit like theorists and experimentalists. It's only by sending some sort of signal from one object to the other that they can react to each other's presence. We have no idea why the laws of nature are this way. There's no particular reason why they should be. It's just that it corresponds to our experience. Newtonian gravity is not local. This bothered Newton a lot back then. You see, if you take Newton's law of gravity with the gravitational force proportional to the mass divided by the square of the distance, then if you move the mass, the distance increases and the force changes instantaneously everywhere. Newton was greatly bothered by this. He called it action at a distance. And that's also what Einstein meant by the phrase. Einstein's theory of general relativity, which we use now to describe gravity, doesn't have this problem. In Einstein's theory, gravity is described by the curvature of space and time, and that curvature is caused by the mass and energy in the space-time. If you move the mass that causes space-time to curve, then the curvature changes, but not instantaneously everywhere. The change spreads outward at the speed of light. So Einstein's theory is local, as physicists say. The problem is, astrophysicists have for decades piled up evidence that something's badly wrong with our understanding of the universe. Because when we look out in the cosmos at our own galaxy or other galaxies or clusters of galaxies, then the predictions of Einstein's theory just don't come out correctly. Space is curved much more than it should be, given the mass and energy that we think is there. The common way to fix this is to postulate this stuff, dark matter, which physicists have tried to find for decades. It's become somewhat of an embarrassment, really. The authors of this new paper now propose something else entirely. They say that maybe gravity is not local after all. You see, because then the curvature in one place is not just caused by the masses in that place place. On top of that come contributions from masses elsewhere. And how does that look? Well, it looks like there is too much mass in space-time. The idea that dark matter is really just an artifact of non-locality isn't entirely new. What's new is that just the other week a new paper appeared whose authors argue that non-local gravity can explain pretty much all the observations normally attributed to dark matter. They do this not by going through all these observations, but rather they show that in some regimes at very large distances such as galaxy clusters, the non-local gravity looks just like dark matter. However, within galaxies, it behaves differently and it appears much like modified Newtonian dynamics, MONT for short. MONT, if you remember, was the major competitor of dark matter. It works nicely in some cases, like for galactic rotation curves, but it's got problems with other things like galaxy clusters. Basically, the observations have told us for at least 20 years that what we really need is a theory that interpolates between something like dark matter on the scale of clusters where MOND doesn't properly work and something like MOND on the scale of galaxies where dark matter doesn't properly work and this non-local gravity just seems to do it. Better still, the idea that gravity isn't entirely local is something that you would expect to naturally occur in a theory of quantum gravity because we know that quantum theory isn't local. I really like the idea, but oh yeah. 
yes, there is a but. The but is that the theory which they proposed has very complicated differential equations that I strongly doubt can be made compatible with any quantum theory. They are also on a more pragmatic level just incredibly difficult and that'll make it hard to find widespread acceptance. Also, the transition from Mon to the dark matter regime doesn't come out of their formalism naturally. They basically put it in by hand. It's the kind of math that makes even grown physicists cry into their coffee. So I give this paper a 5 out of 10 on the bullshit meter. It hasn't yet been peer-reviewed, but it's probably mathematically correct, by which I mean I didn't check the calculation, but they sound like they know what they're doing, which, if nothing else, tells you that you shouldn't trust theoretical physicists for financial advice. However, the theory has clearly been designed to make this interpolation. This is not a problem. I mean, this is how theories work. You make assumptions and then you see how they fit the data. But then again, we could just as well say, well, we use dark matter and some regimes and Mond in others and not bother with all this non-local stuff. Personally, I think dark matter is cheese. It just makes everything a little more attractive. But if it's really non-local gravity, then this means, well, everything in the universe is connected, including eventually theoretical physicists and reality. Welcome to 2026. How about this year you become an expert in data analysis? or take your vibe coding to a new level. Sounds good? Then get started on Brilliant. I've learned so much on Brilliant. They have a large variety of interactive courses on topics in science, computer science and mathematics. You can build up your knowledge gradually from any starting point because the courses adapt to your background skill level and pace. Brilliant has courses to train your general scientific thinking and problem solving skills, but also on specific topics like probability and statistics, how artificial intelligence really works or how to think in code. You can get started right now for free for 30 days. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabina or scan the QR code, you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.